All right, guys, good afternoon. Um, I want to, in this video, discuss Chinua Achebe's The Mad Band, particularly focusing on the question, or the theme, rather, of internal struggle. The reason I'm harping on this point is because in your third quiz, you're going to have to compare the theme of internal struggle as it is manifested in this story as it compares to Lieutenant Cross's struggle in the things they carried. So I want to focus this first video on the idea of internal struggle in the madman, all right? You may be familiar with Chua, Chinua Achebe's work. He died not too long ago. He was a very prolific and iconic African writer. He wrote... Um, things Fall Apart, uh, one of the seminal works of African literature, a really, really brilliant book. And his work is noted for its African themes, for its African locales, for its exploration of the complexities of the Igbo people and the other uh, uh, people in which he lived and wrote about. And The Madman is no different. So in The Mad Men, we have a protagonist who is clearly mentally insane. He is a madman. Or at least that's what it appears to others, right? And that's a big or because this idea, is a, this theme, or this story rather, is in some part about perception. How we perceive others and how our perceptions impact their identities. Conversely, how others perceive us and how that builds our identities. All right. Uh, for instance, if we think about the cliche cliques in high school, right? You have the nerdy kids, you have the skater kids, you have the gothic kids, you got the band kids, etc. And the question becomes, are their identities constructed by themselves or are their identities constructed by other people, Right. Um, if you perceive someone to be a nerd, for instance, like myself, um, does that perception of nerddom actually create their identity as a quote-unquote nerd? And I'm no way using that as a pejorative. I'm a huge nerd, if you can't tell. This is what this story is wrestling with, this idea of perception. And this idea of perception drives the madman Nuibe's internal struggle, all right? So we get this idea that something's not right with this guy from the get-go. Instead of going to the closer market, he wants to go to Eke, the large market. He seems to be driven internally by this need for wealth, for this need for power, for ambition. We get this idea of ambition, of the need for wealth in this paragraph down here. Nuibe was a man of high standing in the Ogbu, and it was rising higher. A man of wealth and integrity, he had just given notice to all the Ozo men of the town that he proposed to seek admission into their honored hierarchy in the coming initiation season. So he wants to be respected. He wants to be honored. He wants to be looked at as somebody worth their weight in salt, somebody superior. He's carrying this need to be loved internally. That's what drives him, this need for power, for wealth, for the need to be loved by others. Again, think about this idea of how identity manifests in the story. He's going along on the highway, and we get the sense that he tends to view himself in the third person, right? Um... People that are eccentric will often do this. They'll be labeled mad, right? People that um, you know, talk about themselves in the third person. Something really interesting here. Uh, he used to walk in the middle of the road, talking about Nuibe, holding it in conversation. Is he talking to the road? Is he, what does that mean? But one day the driver of a mammy wagon and his mate came down on him shouting, pushing and slapping his face. They said that Lori very nearly ran over their mother, not him. After that, he avoided these no noisy lorries, too, with the vagabonds inside them. That, that's interesting, right? This, like, double third-person point of view. They said their lorry very really nearly ran over their mother, not him. That's interesting. And we get, as the story progresses, we learn that the madman sees these people in 
this figure that steals his clothes, right? So who, on one hand, is he projecting himself? Is he projecting himself onto this lorry with the people? Is he making fun of his own mother, in a sense? Um, this is one of the confusing moments of the story, but it hints at his madness. We get the idea of madness from the confusing point of view, and that's an intentional move here. So on the first page, it's important to notice that he internally he's carrying this struggle, this need to be loved, this need to be worshipped, this need for wealth and power. That is what's driving him. That's what drives him to the market, right? On one hand, this can be read as a critique of capitalism. Is he driven to the market uh, by his insane love for wealth, right? Can we apply that today? Are people driven mad by capitalist drives, right? Um, is capitalism a great thing? Does it make us insane and mad for our lust for power and money? He seems to always want to reach this market, this better market, okay? Um, so we go down. It talks about his wives, Udinquo and Mugboye. And I'm sorry if I mispronounce these. But in their conflict is also mirrored the near the protagonist, Nuibe's inner conflict, right? We get these two opposing women. Um, Udinquo was the junior wife by three years, but she never let that worry her. Happily, Mugboye was a woman of peace who rarely demanded the respect due to her from the other. All right, so we get Udinquo, who is portrayed as somewhat more aggressive, more violent, and McBoye, who is presented as more peaceful. Are these two sides of Nwibe, right? As in, are they two personifications of the conflict going on inside of it? This need to be loved, and this need to be peaceful, and this need to assert oneself, okay? Now, this is important because we'll see this again play out, the same dichotomy, the need to be loved versus the need to be assertive, in the things they carried with Lieutenant Cross, which ultimately leads to Ted Lavender getting killed, but we'll get to that point later on. So I want you to pay attention to that. They're fighting. Now, the crux of the story is when he is bathing by the water and this madman, or who he thinks is a madman, the person may not actually be there, steals his clothes and makes fun of his thing dangling, right? I think we know what that is. <laughs> This causes Nuibe to run after the madman, chase him. But the madman is running hard and long, and he's quick. He's not saying anything. And eventually they get lost in this crowd to the point where no one knows who the madman is and who's chasing the madman. To the onlookers, they seem to be the same. And in fact, this is the central point of the story, right? It doesn't matter if Nuibe is totally sane. In the eyes of others, he is a madman. Thus, his identity is constructed as mad, is centered around this idea of madness. All right, so his internal struggle is the need to be loved, but now it is this struggle to assert his identity, right? So this idea of asserting identity is a main struggle. Now, on your quiz, it says compare the idea of um, or the idea of internal struggle. Well, this is a huge internal struggle, the, the struggle for identity, to either assert yourself or to be well-loved. Again, we see this in uh, Things They Carried by Ted Cross, or by um, Dan O'Brien, or Tim O'Brien, I'm sorry, Tim O'Brien. Um, but the same theme, just as Lieutenant Cross carries the need to be loved, carries the need to be assertive. So too does Nuibe carry this madness, this dichotomy, this need to be loved and to be asserted and to be powerful inside of him as well. At the end of the story, after the doctors can't fix him, or one doctor can, he goes mute. And this is important because this reminds me of a lot of ways of young Goodman Brown. Remember after in the story... Um, young Goodman Brown, he goes into the woods and he comes out changed as if he fell symptom to a madness. He comes out, he's changed, he's distanced from society. So too has Nuibe become withdrawn, become distant, become maddened by experience. He's carrying this struggle of, of disenfranchisement from separation from society, from loneliness just like Lieutenant Cross is going to carry, as we'll talk about next time in the next video. 
Uh, this is a point, too, to think about how two characters might be in conversation with each other. How might Nuibe, by virtue of his disenchantment with society, by virtue of his alienation from society, also be like young Goodman Brown, who at the end of the story is also alienated from society? Talks about those universal themes. All right. We'll talk about uh, things that carried perhaps tomorrow in another video. Hopefully this gave you an idea of what to write about. All right. Have a good day.